So I want to start things off a little bit, introduce myself, my name is Chris Hintz, and I'm going to go over a little bit of the Fortinet vision and overview before we dive into some of the technical topics that we have prepared for everybody today. So a little tail of the tape, I know we have been here a couple times, but there's always a new viewer. So just to remind folks, you know, of what Fortinet is as a company, we're all about securing people, data, basically everything you can think of, we want to secure it. And that includes the network piece, that includes wireless and wired. That's why we are here today, why we have our tree of AP, because wireless security is important to us and we need to tie everything together. When you sort of look at where we stand, you can see we've actually shipped over 50% of the global firewall shipments. That means all those firewalls are seated wireless controllers. Because for those of you who've heard from us before, like many of the delegates and the familiar faces I see here, you know that our FortiGate, our firewall, is our wireless controller. And so that actually means that all of these people who are using FortiGates today and everybody out there who may be familiar with our FortiGates, you have the ability to leverage that FortiGate as a wireless controller. This gives us immense reach, both in the security area, but also in networking. Because the way we look at things, we see things getting more and more complicated overall. So infrastructure has been more, has become more complex, more vulnerable to attack because I have a whole bunch of users and devices all frantically trying to get to applications. Those applications these days now reside in a variety of locations, cloud, etc., all of which now require that traffic to go through the network. And that's putting more and more onus on the network to try and secure everything going to a variety of locations connecting from a variety of places. Those users are in different locations now. The number of devices proliferates continuously. And we're going to talk on some of these subjects as we go through things today. But this problem and that focus on the network is what we're here at Mobility Field Day for. We've built a security fabric platform to deal with this problem. Now, you could maybe arbitrarily say that maybe some of these different products that you see listed here should be in other categories. Be that as it may. But as a bit of a decoder ring, as you may hear us talking today, and not, not the 40 decoder ring, I know. <laughs> well, we will try to minimize the 40 as much as possible, but it's what we love, it's what we do, it's how we brand. But we divide our main product groups into secure networking, which is really about bringing that security into the networking space, into unified SASE. I know we talked a bit about SASE last year. And then our AI-driven security operations. But all of these things converge together into this single platform. And what that means is we can have one operating system, one management plane, one analytics engine. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you deploy and how you deal with Fortinet. Now I want to dive a little bit into how that security can work with our FortiGuard labs. The idea being that that AI-driven thought is going on, this is actually mainly based up in Burnaby, but something to really remember here that we'll touch on a little bit later when I talk about AI ops. We've been doing AI ML up here in the FortiGuard space for a long time. I think it's longer than a decade at this point. I'm looking for some nods there because that was the only way to stay ahead of all of the threat space that we see. As the proliferation of bad actors and malware continues to grow, we had to be all over AI ML from a security point. So all of these trillions of detections come down, these FortiGuard labs then services flood down to all of our FortiGates, so we can continually update those services and keep that security best of breed, and that then pushes down to our devices, because the idea of secure networking is that hybrid mesh firewall and our connectivity portfolio, the APs, the switches, our Forti extender, which we'll talk a little bit about later, and you know even things like NAC, all tie into a common fabric and trade information and, and work with the FortiGate. So all of those security forms that we talked about, all that FortiGuard services comes down, feeds the gate, which means it's feeding wireless, wired, and all these technologies. We also have, of course, AI Ops can overlay over that. All this is with a single unified management plane, but we do give you some option there. So I'll talk about that in a bit. Now, I think, Anybody who's looked at our past videos, I encourage you to do so. I'm not going to dive too deep here, and you can already see the 40 speak is starting, but all you really need to know is that the mechanism, the protocol by which we have our firewall 
talk to our access points. We call that Florida link. It allows for a lot of different things. Some of them are listed on this slide. But there's two key things I really want to call out specifically that I think are really interesting. The first of these is for the link NAC. And we actually demoed this, I think, two years ago. So th those who are interested, we're not planning to demo again today. Maybe we'll, we'll bring that back in a year or so. But I would encourage anybody, go, go check out some, you know, one of those past videos where we talked about Fortilink NAC, showed a demo of how that works. The idea is, again, because we have the visibility that a next generation firewall brings, we can tell a lot about the devices connecting to the network. We also understand the security posture. We also understand, oftentimes, the user information that is uh, on that device, if it's a laptop. And we can use all that information to set up simple NAC rules to onboard devices securely, put them in the right security context. Now, this is freely available in the FortiGate to use with your Forti APs. So this basic NAC included, stock, built in, ready to go. So this is not something that you have to pay extra fees for. We, what we have found is with our customer base, oftentimes, this is a great place for them to start their zero trust journey because uh, I'm not going to try and take us into security field day, I promise. But we hear a lot about zero trust. Even when we're in with a networking bent, people are asking us how our networking gear works in a zero trust context. And what I find is a lot of times those people I'm talking to, they love this if they're still early in their journey and just trying to understand how to get things going. Hey, look, use our basic NAC rules, get started here, get comfortable with it. Another thing that Portal link will allow for is something that we call virtual patching. Now we'll come back to this, I think in our last session, we'll talk a little bit more about virtual patching, but at a top level, the idea here is we know that there are some devices, oftentimes IoT or OT devices in an environment that don't get patched as often as they really should. Everybody really, <laughs> I saw the look of non-surprise there. <laughs> uh, you know, Obviously, we should be keeping up to date with all patching, but what we find is with some of these, you know, headless devices, that oftentimes gets viewed as being more hassle than it's worth. Well, again, with those FortiGuard services, we understand if some of these devices have known, you know, vulnerabilities, it can be compromised. And what we can do as part of virtual patching, if we recognize that you have devices on your network that are still running a level of firmware that we now know there's a known vulnerability, we have the ability to apply what's called a virtual patch. We're going to put other compensating controls in place at the firewall automatically from what we can see attaching to your network, attaching to your wireless, for example, to patch that device. And now somebody who's trying to exploit it with that known vulnerability, we're going to block that with what we've set up in the FortiGate. So that's to try and get, tie back to what you kind of know about FortiLink. And, again, give you that expanded view of what Fortilink really allows you to do when you're in a Fortinet environment. But I promised I was going to talk a little bit more about managing it all in that single pane of glass. One thing that I think is interesting about Fortinet is we don't try to tell you that there's only one way to manage your network. Because it's a fabric, we can bring everything together. But how you want to do that, that's up to you. Now, if you just want to have the APs and maybe you're not budgeted yet or you're just not in a, in a situation to be able to move to the FortiGate right now. Great, we have FortiLand Cloud, we've demoed that. Uh, I think we just demoed it last time last year. So we've demoed that before. Great, manager APs, good to go. With the gate, our most common deployment model, we can scale and work with any topology that our customers want to use. At the FortiGate, you may be small, you just want to manage it directly from the FortiGate yourself. Awesome, go for it. If you're more kind of a private public cloud person, the FortiGate is also available as a VM. Install it as a VM, use that as your firewall, and then again, manage your APs and your switches from there. If you want a SaaS option, because maybe you're just going all cloud, great, we have FortiGate Cloud. We also have FortiSassy, which folks may remember we talked about last year, the ability for our Forti APs to actually be controlled and directly communicate with our FortiSassy POPs. And in fact, just as a heads up, keep an eye, if this is interesting to you, we just launched earlier this month a promotion. Anybody who buys one of our models of APs, specifically the 431F, and I believe our social channels are gonna repost about this, so just keep an eye for this. 
If you buy one of those APs, we will give you free access to Fortis Sassy to manage that AP and try that out and see how it works for you through calendar 2024. So I definitely encourage people, go take a look at that. You can find details either on our main website or I've already talked to the social team. They're likely reposting that right as, I, right as I'm speaking. Now, we understand that once you get to scale, once you've got more than about three or four FortiGates, you probably don't want to be managing directly on each FortiGate. That's where, creatively named, I know, FortiManager comes in to help you manage all those FortiGates. And by virtue of managing all those FortiGates, that means you are also managing all that wireless. And that as well, as you can see, is available in a number of form factors. So no matter how someone wants to deploy, if you're somebody, and I remember, I won't, I won't help the company name, but I remember talking to a gentleman, uh, an executive from a company, and they said, I won't touch the cloud. Everything has to be on-prem. Great. Take a Florida manager appliance and take your FortiGates and you're, you're good to go. You don't, nothing ever has to leave your premises. Also talk to people all the time that we do everything in the cloud now. Great. Use Florida manager cloud. Manage everything from there. Full flexibility to manage as you please. Is there a difference in features between the cloud versus, if I'm managing my W9 environment in cloud versus on the FortiGate, is there a limitation in features or is same? There's no limitation in features. I think the only thing you'll see is we do tend to dev the, like for Florida Manager as an example, the appliance and then port it to the cloud. So if you picked any moment in time, if you managed to hit it right, you might hit a place between releases. So as you may have like a month or two where maybe it hasn't been ported to the Florida Manager cloud instance. Okay. But it's all harmonized. Again, that's the benefit of using a single OS and single code base is it's really just a question of them putting it over. It's not a situation where we have completely disparate code streams. Okay. So but nothing get, like, oh, in firewall, I can't do this, but in cloud, you, I can do this and that kind of stuff. No, no. The only place that you would see a little bit of that dif uh, difference is if you were using Fortiland Cloud, which doesn't involve the FortiGate at all, then there's obviously less security features enabled on Fortiland Cloud if you don't have a firewall at all. Okay. So that, you will see some differentiation, but past that, once you're in the secure networking band, no real difference. I told you I would get and come back to, uh, to AI ops. You know, we know that this is a big buzzword in the industry. There's no reason not to be leveraging AI whenever possible. We've talked about this in several past uh, mobility field days. So despite the, the PM being here, you know, and he argued strenuously with me that we should be talking about it again, talking about it every single year. I said, no, nah, we're, we're going to give you a year off from this. But I always do just like to, again, point out that while sure we did release this within the last, I think it was three or so years ago, AI and ML are not new to us. And you heard me talking about FortiGuard Labs. Like we've been in that space for a while. It's been interesting to watch some of these dev teams when they, you know, on AI ops, they have an interesting question to just reach out to the teams that have been doing this forever in FortiGuard Labs. Say, hey, we've got this option of this path or this path. What do you think? Take that one. This, this is the better way to do that. But we have all the other pieces to help you manage things. We have a, a product called FortiGuest to help you with, you know, onboarding guests onto your network. I know, I know, Captain Portal, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a whole NAC product with FortiNAC. So we talked about FortiLink NAC. Sorry about that. Oh. We talked about FortiLink NAC. FortiLink NAC, of course, has everything just built in, but it's very basic and it doesn't, as you might imagine, since it leverages our APs and our switches, it doesn't do multi-vendor, but we do acknowledge that a lot of people sometimes they can't, but I'd like them to, they can't snap their fingers and be all Fortinet in a day. The Fortinac, full third party, full, full vendor interoperability, which is nice, helps you bridge that gap, and also has you know, a lot of higher level features to be able to stretch across an entire security fabric, communicating with other pieces of the security fabric that just the focus with Fortilink doesn't have. So I've even seen customers of ours that they started with Fortilink and NAC, got used to it, got familiar with NAC, and then grew into and bought Fortinac later on as they, again, matured and were ready for an increased number of features available to them. And lastly, Florida Monitor. I think we may have talked about Florida Monitor maybe about three or four years ago. I think it was actually during COVID. For digital experience management, you know, we hear a lot of questions about this as well. So we 
main point I want to make here before I kind of close out and hand over to the real meat is we have a lot of the pieces that you're expecting to deploy and manage a network. I know we get branded a lot as a cybersecurity company. We pride ourselves on being a cybersecurity company. But part of that now is this convergence of networking and security. These things have to come together. Anybody who may have heard on any of our calls, our CEO speak, he believes that the secure networking space, this converged space where everything comes together, is actually going to eventually dominate. That this proliferation of malware and exploits that's going on in the space is going to require everybody to have security embedded into the network. And so that's why we're here. We have the broadest platform of 50 plus tightly integrated product lines spread across the, the areas I spoke about. But here at Mobility Field Day, I promise this is the last you're going to hear me going on about all this. We're going to now dial it in with some real networking talk. I'll have Sue Mans come up here. Yes, uh, please. Just wondering how much is the secure product life cycle, uh, you know, capabilities factoring into you know, the Fortinet composition? Uh, it, basically ensuring that the products are adhering to design principles that make sure that the client, whoever it is, is not going to have issues because of, you know, the manufacturing process. Yeah, we take that actually very seriously. And one of the things, you know, I think we actually have a couple of public statements uh, on what we do around P-Search and kind of the analysis that we do internally. So we take that extremely seriously in mm -hmm. terms of how we investigate what we're building, how we investigate both on the hardware as well as the software side, and ensure that we are being responsible in that space. And it's, I think this is where, in a sense, you could say we benefit from being a cybersecurity company, right? because this is something that we can't just brush off. We won't just pay lip service to. We believe that we have a responsibility to be open and ethical in how we handle any threat or vulnerability in our, in our devices. Are you seeing it as a uh, competitive advantage at this? I really do. Mm -hmm. You know, when I have people coming into EBCs, a lot of times, you know, they, when they're trying to understand what's different, once I get to things about Fortilink and I start diving in a little bit into what that really means for them, I do start to see these light bulbs go off. I know, you know, historically the security team and the networking team just stared across the battlements at each other. You know, the few times they talked, you know, maybe one guy purposely spit on the other one. <laughs> We're seeing that slowly go away. Yeah. And what we're finding is more and more companies, they, the idea of actually going to a, a company that is truly merging the two and converging them might be new, but the idea of bringing it together isn't new because they're trying to find a way to sew their groups together internally. Because they're finding that, yeah, you know, when the networking team, for example, was running open loop, they're installing things that the security team doesn't know about and isn't prepared to secure, and vice versa. The security team is implementing things that is then causing networking problems. And we're hearing more and more that doesn't work. Very good, thanks.